The following is an excerpt from the best-selling book, Tales from the War, by General Aloy Thalmus. There were few spacefaring species who did not pick a side in the ongoing war between the Tanari Coalition and the Galactic Council. But despite entreaties from both sides, the humans insisted on remaining a neutral party. Hedging our bets, they called it. They weren't particularly valuable allies, but in a war that was so closely drawn, every ally counted. The Terran United Nations were more ideologically similar to the Democratic Council than the Warlike Coalition, so they did show a bit of favouritism to us, but they maintained dealings with both sides, allowing all vessels passage through their systems and selling surplus resources for a quick profit. What was most surprising to our analysts was that the Coalition respected the Terran degree of neutrality, at least at first. Multiple theories abound as to why, but the general consensus is that the production demands of an interstellar war were burning through their mineral stockpiles too quickly. It was better for the Tanari to trade with the humans than to conquer them and raise their infrastructure. So, Earth had emerged as an important supplier for both armies, virtually unscathed by the galaxy-wide conflict. Things might have stayed that way if the Coalition had not deployed chemical weapons over Potorama, the third largest city in Council territory. The humans were as outraged as we were over the millions of dead civilians, and they cut off shipments from the Tanari military then and there. An embargo, they called it. But still, the Terran government would not declare war on the Coalition. They feared retribution if they got involved directly. After all, their fledgling military could not compare to the greater powers. As much as they sympathised with our plight, they did not think their participation would make a difference one way or the other. Their breaking point for the Coalition was when the Terrans agreed to lease us land in their systems to build a military base. This would place our fighters just a tad closer to enemy territory, and the Tanari were not having it. They were going to teach those insolent Earthlings a lesson. The message was received loud and clear, but rather than scaring the humans away from aiding us as expected, it was the incident that caused them to enter the war. I was there on the ground when the infamous raid occurred. The Council had sent me, their highest ranking fleet commander, to secure our contract with the Terrans. This was a deal that our government did not want to fall through under any circumstances, so it's my imperative to finalise it with whatever sweet talking was necessary. There were plenty of officers of lesser stature that could have been sent, but sending our highest general would convey respect. Atlanta was a burgeoning metropolis at the time, boasting humanity's greatest technological and architectural achievements. Most importantly, it was home to their first spaceport. People from all over their planet flocked to the city to encounter alien visitors firsthand. The Terrans had a convoy waiting for me as my craft docked, and I admired the city skyline on the short drive over. Our designated meeting spot was the Solaris Tower, which at the time was the tallest building on Earth. As soon as I saw it with my own eyes, it became obvious why the humans hosted alien diplomats at this location. Everything about the tower was gorgeous and majestic, from its bluish sheen to the silver spire at the top. I asked the driver how such a tall structure could remain upright, and he answered simply, carbon nanotubes. My fascination with their engineering aside, nothing seemed out of the ordinary as we arrived at our destination. I thanked the driver for the ride and entered the tower on my own. A few human journalists milled about in the lobby to document my visit, but I ignored them and forged ahead to the elevator. With a light chime, the door swung open. I pressed the button for the top floor and waited impatiently. There was only gentle acceleration and a soft humming sound as the lift ascended. I mistook the noise for the whirring of the pulley system at first, but as it intensified, I realised it was something else. Something I recognised all too well from past deployments. The roar of a Tanari bomber's engines. By the time that revelation had crossed my mind, it was already too late. Later accounts of the incident stated that three stealth bombers had eluded Earth's orbital defences. Their targets, the Solaris Tower, the spaceport, and a residential neighbourhood on the outskirts of the city. If they had scored a direct hit on the tower, none of us would have made it out. But as it were, the payload landed about 100 metres off, close enough to compromise the building's structural integrity and shower it in flames, but not to cause immediate collapse. The sheer force of the initial blast rocked the building. As the cabin lurched from side to side, I tried to use the wall to support myself. I caught my balance, but it was a momentary respite. The lights flickered out, and the elevator plummeted downward at dizzying speeds, propelled by gravity. Terror gripped my heart, and I braced for the end. Then, the emergency brake kicked in, and the lift screeched to a halt. I struggled to my feet, trying to keep my wits about me. I pounded against the doors, scraped at them with my own claws, attempted to pull them apart. It was to no avail. 
as smoke wafted in, I lay down on the floor. What was the point in spending my last moments of life struggling? It was difficult to accept that I would die like this, locked in a metal box that would soon be my coffin. I'd always thought I would perish in battle, with honour and valour as my father had. The inhalation of fumes soon had me swimming into delirium. My eyes closed, and a strange sense of peace washed over me. My oxygen-deprived brain would soon be choked out, and then there will be nothing but blank. Darkness for all eternity. Hello? Is there anyone in there? At first I thought the human voice and the pounding against the door were figments of my imagination, but as I blinked my eyes back open, I still heard it loud and clear. Help! I managed to croak out. The pounding ceased. I feared the human had not heard my weak reply, but a few moments later the doors inched open. My rescuer was dressed in a thick black coat with strange green stripes across it, almost like a uniform. I saw others in similar clothes, guiding people towards the stairwell. Soldiers, perhaps. The humans walked over to me and scooped me up in her arms without a word. It must have taken considerable strength to maneuver with a fully grown Wagner in tow, but she made it seem easy. Fire danced across the floor, debris rained from the ceiling, and smoke clouded our vision, but none of that slowed her down. She navigated over to the stairs and raced down tens of flights with blistering speed. Before I knew it, we emerged outside. An army of vehicles with flashing lights were camped on the road, many of them spraying the tower with water. My saviour carried me over to a medical stretcher and left me in the care of a paramedic. I watched with disbelieving eyes as she turned and ran back into the flames. Her stride never faltered, even as the hungry blade swallowed her up. There were others just like her, charging into danger without a second thought. Who are they? I asked the paramedic, tending to me. He smiled, hearing the awe in my voice. Firefighters. You see, most species extinguish fires from afar, with containment being the priority. Putting more lives at risk seems reckless, suicidal even. But the Terran word for the profession is telling. Humans fight fire, and I even think they can win. The elements may not be a living enemy, but they'll wage a war against them anyway. These heroes are soldiers, in their own way. The firefighters stood on the front lines that day, pushing Mother Nature herself into retreat. They poured their heart into the battle to save lives and defend their home. Let me tell you, the fire never stood a chance.